again, everybody. Captain Happy here, and I am coming with part two of my maiden voyage of the tier eight French battleship, the Richelieu. Um, I hadn't intended on doing this, and first thing I'll do is correct myself from the first video. This is actually episode four. Instead, I think I said epi episode three. But what ended up happening is I recorded, or I, I played that game, recorded the replay, did all the stuff, and then immediately following that game, I followed it up with this one. So, considering um, how both games went, I decided to put this one in a, a part two. Uh, I do, it's kind of like the first one, it's obviously not exactly the maiden voyage. Um, this is with the upgraded hull. Now you can kind of tell, because A, I don't have the spotter plane, um, but you will be able to clearly tell late in this game, um, because the anti-air defenses are substantially better on the upgraded hull. Uh, I did not, I figure I didn't have to go over the uh, stats, consumables, uh, captain build, that kind of a thing. I'll amend one thing that I said from the previous video, and that is that the tur Traverse is very workable. Um, I, I haven't had any issues with it even swinging the guns uh, completely from side to side, so uh, not much need to focus too much there. Uh, this battle, I, I almost wanted to name it something different. Um, I did get four kills in the previous video, and spoiler alert I end up with four kills in this one but in this one man am I freaking robbed a couple of times uh, I very easily could have should have had my Kraken but you know I will monitor my complaints um, as you can see I also uh, interestingly enough for back-to-back -back games this one is also uh, I am high tier, uh, so I'm facing tier 6s, uh, similar to the first battle. There are two CVs on both sides, and it is obviously on the same map. So there's a tremendous amount of this video that's going to look very, very familiar. Uh, deja vu. <laughs> and, uh, pun intended, we're in a French ship. Um, from, from the first, uh, let's see the first part of episode four. I try and focus on whatever cruiser I can see. I get a little unlucky with this Fiji in the first salvo, but um, this, the one thing, so I, I had to take something back from the first video. I will confirm something else, that the dispersion is nice in, in this. Uh, you know, uh, you're, you're not gonna see, again, uh, sorry for spoilers, you're not, you're not gonna see any dev strikes or any one shots of cruisers or anything like that, but you see even there, you've got three or four shells that are kind of flying wildly, but I've noticed very consistently you do have a grouping of three or four shells that tend to be really tight. And so as long as your aim is true for the most part, you can reliably hit targets even further away. Um, forgive me as well, I didn't do the normal preparation for this commentary. I just kind of had the battle and got excited about it, so I threw everything together. Um, the battle, similar to the last one, and I even said this in the last video, Battleship play, especially with battleships that tend to do the nose-in kind of thing, can at least initially start out a bit stagnant. Um, but another deja vu element of the first battle, you watch, we, were, we are in the north spawn by A, and the enemy did something almost exactly like the enemy did in the previous game, where they went with a heavy push to the west, um, so they're in the southwest now. The key difference this time around is we don't have a friendly destroyer down there spotting them. So in this battle, they end up more or less completely unafraid to continue that push. Uh, and it, 
becomes a, a bit of a threat. Now, one thing the enemy team does, <laughs> and, and forgive me because I, I feel like I'm already getting pretty repetitive here, but there's so many similarities between this battle and the first battle. Uh, one of the similarities, but it ends up in this battle being an unnecessary one, is the enemy all of a sudden takes a, a hard turn through B. And I don't know how necessary it is. Uh, we've got a couple cruisers and a kiting battleship, and then our, our two carriers in the north there in the west. But almost all of these enemy ships, they definitely uh, have superior firepower, superior numbers. I'm not entirely sure why they don't continue to push north. But you can already kind of see right now, most of their battleships have begun pushing north, northeast through the B cap. Um, what that kind of ends up doing, and, it, and it's, it's not come to fruition entirely yet, but they end up putting themselves in a position where we have crossfires. And just kind of my, my opinion, um, were I over on that side, I might have tried to encourage our team to continue pushing north instead of turning, turning east here. But, you know, you never want to interrupt your enemy when he's in the middle of making a mistake. So I, I try, to <laughs> try, to, try to follow that principle as much as I can. You see, we're taking some shots here on some of the new Russian battleships that I've been seeing more and more. Um, they are available with the crates. Uh, and I myself, I'm interested. And I'm definitely going to grind the line when it comes out, but I'm not interested enough to be spending any money on the crates to try and win them. Uh, it's another line that seems cool, seems interesting, but not for me personally worthwhile to spend money to try and win them early. I'll, I'll just wait till the next patch when they come out. But as you can see here, so notice on the minimap how half of my team is now pushing towards D and almost the entire enemy team that was on that western flank is now in B instead of continuing their push up into the west and you can see it happening right now yes our ships in the north are are egressing they are kiting but it is creating a crossfire and it's at this point and partially because I notice two things. First, the majority of the enemy battleships are either stagnant or they've actually turned and are heading south. The cruisers, however, are heading north. So I make a decision here, you know what? I'm gonna stop my movement south and I'm gonna come around and, and try to face them off at A and create a crossfire of my own. Um, uh, that and I also spot a nice juicy carrier out there in the west and that's far off right now it's not something that I'm thinking I can necessarily get at at this point but it does play in my decision to change my course somewhat dramatically I also am hoping that I can catch at least one of these cruisers popping up north so similar to what happened in the last game with the enemy uh, the enemy kid who my last known location was heading south and he didn't expect me turning around and coming up and facing him I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed for a similar thing here with this Atlanta now he does pop his radar so if he's paying any attention he sees me moving now and, and initially I you can see him there he's come to a stop so I'm like, dang it, all right, I wasn't able to actually surprise him. Um, I do notice here, the one ship on the enemy team that did the thing I thought probably more of them should do is the key uh, to the north, and he becomes a threat, but here comes the Atlanta. And this is exactly what I was hoping for. And it wasn't a tremendous amount of damage, but he exposes himself enough to me that I can get the killing blow. Um, 
start taking some fire from the uh, enemy Colorado. And what I like here, he has a choice. I, I stay bow in, and I am angled to the key, and obviously bow into the Colorado. So he can either continue to show me broadside and give me a juicy target. Oof, meow. Okay, I thought I was angled well against the key. <laughs> um, or he can turn bow into me to mitigate some damage, but that only allows his for, uh, forward two guns to fire on me. So he becomes substantially less of a threat. So I try to keep his attention there. Um, meanwhile, looking for maybe a better target to shoot at. Uh, at this point, um, I think that's a York off to my left. He's angling away, and I decide, well, yeah, the Colorado's low enough. Let's see if we can't put him down. And we do. So that is one set of enemy guns that are no longer a threat to me. It also bought enough time, I make a little bit of a judgment, uh, error in judgment here, in reversing a little too fast too far because the enemy um, cruiser there, oh god, there's another big hit by the key. Um, I wanted to shoot that broadside cruiser. I know I'm outside of its torpedo range, so I'm relatively safe, but after two big salvos from that key, I've had enough of that. So now it's time to focus my secondaries on the hipper. It was a hipper, not a York and start focusing my fire on the key, not to mention um, protecting our ACAP. He's the only enemy ship that's a threat. All of my team recognize it, all of my team start focusing him, and I am able to uh, turn my guns his way, and, and you did just see a pretty good example there of the turret traverse, and how very workable it is, and how I maybe kind of under slash over whatever it is I, I i didn't estimate it correctly in my first video i thought it might be more of an issue than it clearly is but we end up getting the key now having noticed the carriers heading over in this direction the carriers have also noticed me heading in their direction so i quickly become a focus of both of them and this is a point in the battle where you get to see i'm not gonna say it's crazy or it's it's incredibly potent but the aa on this ship is effective enough um combined with some active maneuvering um so even though i'm targeting the hipper now i really want this kill i always am having an eye on the minimap and seeing what bombers are coming what kind of bombers in particular if they're torpedo bombers and always trying to keep my bow facing them to mitigate or even as you saw just there completely eliminate any damage that I would take from them. Um, successful there however he comes in uh, with some bombers here and I think that might have been the other CV uh, you know I'm not sure my, my screen here is a little bit too small for me to clearly identify but anyway um, you can see, oh, they're, they're rocket planes. Okay, and it is the Shokaku. Um, I think at this point, he might have been low on torpedo bombers. Now, there, there comes some more. But he also might have thought that what I was really trying to do was cap. Nah, nah, uh -uh. We're, We have such an advantage now, and our points are at, uh, at the point. I'm not worried at all about capping. I, I'm hungry. I, I want some CV blood. <laughs> so uh, I pop my heel there, which gives me definitely an adequate amount of HP to deal with both sets of strikes coming in from both CVs. And I eh, just barely am able to dodge those torps. Now, I don't know whether it was intentional or not, but you will see as this battle turns out, that torpedo drop by the enemy Shokaku um, did two things. First of all, completely exposed me on my broadside here, and I probably could have hit my brakes and only taken one of those torps. But the other thing it did that made me a little bit that I was more mindful of in the moment is he made me turn off my course to the point where it took me, or is taking me, an extra 
15, 20 seconds at least to get around this corner and get some, uh, get line of sight and actually be able to fire on him. And you can see our points are ticking up, 960, 970. I think I'm going to be able to get one of the CVs for my fourth kill. I'm, I'm hoping anyway, but that turnout, at the very least, bought this Shokaku time. And I take my last salvo, yep, get the last kill, and that actually ends the game before I have any opportunity to do damage to the Shokaku. So, another very successful outing. Um, more affirmation to me. I know they've both been low tier games, and high tier battleships should have fun when they're high tier. But all said, I think this is going to be the type of ship that I can feel at least competitive in, no matter if I'm low tier or high tier. And certainly if I'm high tier, clearly I'm going to have fun. Um, 39 planes killed, 2k base XP, another 4 kills, uh, and another dreadnought. So uh, a very successful run this time I ended up with almost 100 uh, 100k damage which felt really good um, and you can see the the XP there it is the uh, 200 plus at the moment so that's why you see the numbers being as high as they are but I uh, thank you very much again for watching I hope you enjoy part two this is Captain Happy signing off